Welcome to Branching Out's second episode. This one we couldn't keep in the hopper any longer. It's what is Pmax and what to do about it. On this episode, we hope to cover a few key things. One, we want to make sure that you know what Pmax is if you are a Google Ads advertiser or a modern marketer. You're going to need to understand Pmax and understand what it's all about. We're going to cover the thesis for Pmax. Why does Google Pmax exist and why should it exist? We're going to cover the thesis against Pmax. Are there any issues with Pmax? Uh, Spoiler alert, there's going to be a few things. How should you think about Pmax? This is going to be dependent on many factors and we want you to understand how you and your brand should consider this particular tool within the Google Ads platform. And finally, what should you do if you need to use it? We want to cover a couple really critical concepts and make sure you're armed to succeed. I hope you enjoy. Well, let's just get right into it. So what is Pmax? Pmax is short for something, just like everything in marketing. Pmax stands for Performance Max. It does make me wonder what performance min would be. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Google Ads has a new automated buying solution. It's actually been around for uh, at least a few years now at this point in some form or fashion. But it's automated buying through Google using Google's multitude of advertising platforms. It's our AI and automation. So it definitely looks and feels like uh, one of the latest and greatest things from one of the biggest uh, brands and data companies in the world. One of the things you should know as a marketer, as an advertiser, is that things like Pmax, things like Performance Max from Google Ads, these are not new things. These are just the newest version of things that Google's been working on for quite a long time. This is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just remember that one of the benefits of Google Pmax would not be any sort of new breakthrough with respect to their ability to target, identify customers, automate you know the, the best message at the right time. This uh, iteration of Performance Max is essentially one of the many in the multitude of chapters of Google's automated advertising strategies and products that they've rolled out in, you know, sometimes successful, otherwise not so successful fashion across uh, the years. Um, The predecessor to Performance Max, you uh, might have been an adopter of Google Smart Campaigns. So again, this was the idea that You tell Google what you're trying to do as a business. I want to get sales to my business. I want to get customers. I want to get phone calls. I want to get website visits. Uh, We probably need to do a whole other episode on this idea of whether or not businesses have distinct goals or if really every business has the same goal. But that's not for today. Smart Campaigns was the predecessor to Pmax. Um, Before that, there were really the rollouts of the core search products today, which is the responsive search advertising format or the responsive search ad. Um, Alongside that was dynamic search ads uh, and kind of alongside and a predecessor to that was the smart display advertising that Google um, rolled out across their own display network or their old content network for those of you who are real old school folks. And then if you really want to you know, think about this from a broader perspective. Uh, these automated AI-driven advertising solutions, they, they don't come from whole cloth. They all come from uh, feeds of information, not just from users, but from advertisers themselves. So things like product listing ads, uh, or as you know them today, shopping ads, they're really not in any way that different than the core concept that Pmax delivers, which is essentially a you know information fueled uh informed automated product for creating uh ad creative and and targeting and and 
customer uh, intent matching on the Google platform. So what is the thesis for Pmax? Why should we like Pmax? There are a lot of reasons for Performance Max and a lot of great reasons why it should exist. If we start with the core idea that this is an ad created by Google and that Google, more than any other company or entity, knows user intent. It knows its users and it knows what people want. The reason why it knows is pretty clear. It runs uh, not just the world's biggest search engine today, but it's essentially the largest repository of search and intent data uh, ever known. On top of that, Google's built a really powerful ad platform that pairs with its search algorithm. So when you're running an ad platform that auctions ads where the winning ads are the most relevant ads, that in essentially means that Google understands relevance and understands what people want when they search. And so if they know what people want when they search, it means that they can predict what they are looking to find and therefore click on. Google essentially built the greatest click prediction machine that's ever been known. And that click prediction machine is very important when it comes to running efficient ads. Google also knows what you value. So let's not forget that Google's conversion tracking data is on something around three out of every four digital marketing uh, participating websites on the internet. So if you advertise, you probably have at least heard of Google Ads conversion tracking, and there's a three in four chance that you're using it today. And if it, they have your conversions, it means that they know what you care about. And if they know what you care about, that means they know what you value. Google also happens to know what uh, here at Bonsai we call fundamental bidding theory. Uh, that was the name that I gave uh, the concept when I taught the auction at Google to the business organization and to the analysts across uh, the globe. But Google also knows it by another name, and I think a lot of people know it by another name, which is value-based bidding, or VBBB. <laughs> wow, I really fumbled that one. VBB. So if Google understands what people want to click on and they know what you value and they know value-based bidding, uh, you'd think that would be it, but they actually know more. So remember, it's Google's ads, it's Google's auction, which means they know what you want, they know what you value, they know what customers want, they know what they value, and they also know what your competitors are bidding. So not to get too deep into auction science, but one of the best ways to optimize where you show on the page and how much traffic intent that you buy and therefore return that you get is based on essentially what kind of prices you're going to have to pay and the prices you have to pay are based on those competitors and so the fact that it sees its own auction it understands where there's opportunities for capture or there's opportunities for you know taking a step back based on highly competitive bids from your competitors there's really no one better position to maximize your bid it's kind of like cheating right they're kind of bidding on your behalf while kind of being able to see behind the behind the curtain, so to speak, but it is what it is. It doesn't change the fact that as a marketer, as a business using their platform, you would want the most information possible when setting your bids. And Pmax has access to all of that. Um, Google is also better positioned to maximize your investment, uh, mainly because from the Pmax perspective, remember it's a performance max automated ad creation, ad targeting, ad bidding, and essentially ad execution and delivery mechanism, right? It's set up entirely so as the marketer, you are simply telling Google, here's how much money I have, here's my business, here's the assets I have to work with. You decide where to spend you know, my advertising dollar to get the best return. With it being that level of uh, essentially automation and, you know, kind of decisioning turned over to the system, that does play into how Google Ads were created in the first place. So you wouldn't know it today based on where the industry is at and the, you know, beyond robust search engine management 
industry today, both from the agency perspective, uh, boutique perspective, um, and everything in between. But you might be surprised to know that Google Ads was actually engineered not to be managed at all. Uh, the folks who put it together uh, picked mechanisms that were intended to work automatically. They were done in a way to, to minimize human intervention as much as possible. The whole idea that the most relevant ad would show to users' search intent was, was very deliberate. It was meant to essentially help match advertisers to their most potentially valuable customers without a person needing to know how to target them, you know, other than participating in the auction. And then the entire second price auction concept in the first place was designed literally to minimize the need for advertisers to go in and feel that they had to adjust uh, what they wanted to spend on any given keyword or ad or, or target. Uh, at the end of the day, a second price auction is based on what the person below you pays, which actually means you have very little overall say in what you actually end up paying. Um, you have some constraints. You are allowed to identify what you are you know, not willing to pay and what you're going to you know, sort of cap out at. But beyond that, there's really no optimizing the cost for your next click. You're essentially always given the optimal price, and this is entirely by design. Google wanted people to participate because it was valuable. They did not want people going in and managing the ads and bids on a daily basis. Again, you would not know that based on where we're at today. Um, you know, you might then ask, well, how did everyone do it the way that Google didn't intend this whole time? Um, there's a good reason for that too. Uh, Google search ads is, you know, and Google advertising in general is part of digital marketing, which is part of overall marketing and, and marketing has been around for a long time. Marketing uh, has practical constraints. Uh, businesses uh, that have marketing, they give those marketing teams budgets. Uh, those marketers have been trained and are really good at identifying marketing plans, developing campaign strategies, uh, figuring out who their target customers are, and then building and orchestrating entire you know, ecosystems of uh, tactics, uh, platforms, channels, and, and investments to convince those target customers to buy. The idea that you are there to identify your target and then intervene to convince them to buy, this is sort of, you know, foreign to the entire concept of Google Ads. Google Ads, the, the magic behind Google Ads is actually this idea that though marketing has been around for a long time and is incredibly successful that for everyone you're trying to convince there's actually likely way more people than you might expect who are looking to buy the product that you're selling and at google scale when you can cover the broad range of folks who use google's platform for search on a daily basis you can connect to those high intent hand raisers uh, not just for one advertiser but for all advertisers and that connect making that connection uh, at massive scale you know identifying those hand raisers and connecting businesses to those consumers that's actually a much better business than you know what really influential marketing can deliver uh, you know influential kind of what the, what we think of as traditional marketing right it it's going to be the place where you can build the, the next great iconic American brand. And, uh, you know, whether it be things like the, you know, Santa with Coca-Cola or, um, you know, just do it with Nike or, or think different with Apple or, you know, any number of hundreds of examples that you might have. You know, th these are, in, you know, incredibly powerful uh, case studies and the sort of reason that, uh, you know, marketing is, such a respected and, and powerful science that, that grows brands and businesses. But at the end of the day, you are, you know, as a marketer and a, as a, a human in charge, you're much more likely than Google is to come up with those great, um, highly inf influential, uh, you know, convincing marketing programs than, than Google's automation will. But Google's automation, like the Google Ads platform, it's much more likely than you are to win a million mini decisions 
figuring out who are those hand raisers are and then helping you convert those hand raisers with the right message at the right time. So what does that mean? It means that almost every decision made in search engine marketing management actually hurts your potential performance versus the performance you could have had had you left those decisions up to Google's algorithms alone. Powered by the strong signals of value that you can provide it, uh, either through tracking data or better data, which we can talk about at a different time on a different episode. So Google's long known this and has been trying to wrestle the controls away from their clients since the platform really took off back in the mid 2000s. This is the latest attempt. This is Pmax. You can equip Pmax with the ingredients that it needs. You can tell it what you sell. You can provide it your creative. You can tell it a lot about what you value, AKA you can give it conversion data or allow it to collect conversion data. You can tell it where and you know when you want your ads to show. And then essentially Pmax can do the rest because Google has user intent, not just through search, but it has it through shopping. It has user intent through YouTube search. It has it through travel, hotels, flights, Google images, email, maps, the app store, Google messages, Google news. When you get directions to a place within maps, Google, my business, Google earth. When you look at something on street view, when you're using your Android, when you use Google plus, <laughs> I'm just kidding on that last one. Anyway, my point is they've got the biggest intent database in the world. They have the biggest device graph in the world. They have the most compute. They've got the most cash and they've got the longest track record of user-based click prediction, which is the most direct sign of intent available still today. That's really the case for Google performance max, but I mean, why are you listening to this podcast? It's probably not because you wanted to hear the case for Pmax. It's probably because Pmax has not worked for you. Thousands of Google's biggest advertisers don't utilize Pmax today. In fact, when you Google, why does Pmax, the suggested search fills in not work. The top Reddit posts are, does anyone still use Pmax? Is Pmax a scam? In fact, there's entire ad agencies positioned solely to be the agency that does not use Google Performance Max. So next we're going to talk about the thesis against Pmax. So the thesis against Performance Max, it usually starts with black box and it often ends with it doesn't work. Performance Max gives the promise of additional touch points and market share at your current ROAS or return on ad spend or CDR conversion rate. And that's appealing to any marketer who wouldn't want more volume at the same rate of return. The issue and the question in practice is this, where are these additional touch points coming from? Why aren't your search ads finding them already? If you run multi-channel marketing through Google, so if you do YouTube, display, Gmail ads, on top of your search or Google shopping ads, you will be having that question, but in an even stronger way. Well, what are we really talking about here? And herein lies the issue. These additional touch points showing on additional networks or formats that are only available through Performance Max, these are not touch points that are here just because they've identified them through some special powered AI or targeting mechanism. What we're really talking about here are ads for you know, your brand shown to customers when they're looking up directions to your store to visit when they type it into Google Maps or ads that they see about your business when they're interrupted, when they're reading Google news, doing their latest doom scroll. These are ads for your brand, for these customers, when they're seeing if your site has a place on the app store. Uh, these are also the ads for your company to your customers 
that are the cookie cutter ads that are in between commercial breaks, between legitimate ads, say when you're watching your favorite show on YouTube TV. These are ad experiences that no ad seller could ever convince a marketer or an advertiser to buy. When you break it down, the only way Pmax can retain relevance with these incremental touch points is to have them map to conversions. And to have them map to conversions means they're really just squeezing in additional ad exposures or touch points across the Google device graph, across their multitude of Google properties that they have for your customers on their phone or on their computer, and inserting clicks into those existing customer journeys so that those map back to conversion. The fact is this, the only incremental audiences and incremental touch points you can get on the Google Ads platform are less relevant than the ones you already get. There's no such thing as more volume for the same ROI in a second price auction, especially one where one of the two methods of payment in that auction is with relevance. Are there more media formats and networks that are upper funnel? that if you don't use, you could start using to make you a multi-channel marketer, to expand your market share and reach. And should you consider using them and buying them? Absolutely. Does this reach you get up the funnel on additional formats and media come with increased efficiency, increased relevance, and equivalent or increased performance above what you get from your hand-raising footprint on Google Ads? Uh, of course not. Pmax at the end of the day then is Google's attempt to fill undersold auctions. It's their view into identifying ways to increase RPMs or the revenue that they make per impression of users on Google's platforms and increasing those RPMs across Google's owned and operated properties, expanding and testing how they can saturate those uh, experiences with users with screen time that involves more ad exposures and can they do so while still retaining user engagement? The performance max that that describes is not performance max that increases your performance as an advertiser. It's performance max for Google itself. So how should you think about Google performance max? Pmax can help new brands or advertisers establish decent Google ads performance, especially those that have no presence on Google ads to begin with. In those cases, Pmax can automate and largely simplify what we would think as Google search or Google shopping ads and generate those in a largely successful way to a high intent audience for the first time. The complexity of the digital path that purchase makes building a uh, Google search or Google shopping campaign from the bottom up uh, and particularly challenging today. Uh, if you're starting out, it's unlikely you could create better targeting and performance than Google could if you give Google the right assets, assign the right value targets to the right activities, and then have a place to measure and then deploy that measurement data back into the performance max algorithm, which then sends it on to smart bidding. This makes Pmax a pretty interesting opportunity for new brands and new advertisers. But what if you were an established, long-standing, dare I say mature Google advertiser and marketer? Your account is going to be the product of a long-developed connection between the hand raisers that look for your product and the ads and business that's serving them. By that definition alone, Pmax really can't help you. It won't get you to spend more money on Google because the advertisements that Pmax will help you show will not end up being incremental to your business and your bottom line. You'd be better off leaving it alone. And why is that again? Because remember, Google Ads shows ads in the order of highest intent, meaning your ad dollars have always been finding the most relevant users. The only opportunities to find high intent market inventory outside of your current buy is where you haven't potentially been playing before with respect to networks and ad formats. Things like Google Shopping if you sell retail and haven't been using shopping before, or video if you're a brand that hasn't been looking to 
reach their you know, your target market outside the context of just Google search. Beyond that, for mature marketers, all PMAX can do is find the remnant inventory that's left from your current customer's existing journeys. These remnant spaces in your current customer's journey, these are those maps clicks where they're already looking for your store and they see an ad for your store at the bottom. Uh, the reminder to visit the app when they already have the app on their phone or the Gmail ad for your brand that's sitting at the top of their inbox where you were going to go and type in your, your site directly on Google when you were going to shop later anyway. So the closing, what if you want to use Pmax or you have to use Pmax? How can you control it so that it works for you? There are a couple ways to do this, believe it or not. Just because Pmax is fully automated and it, it, by design, it's meant to not give you any control for how Google allocates your dollars. There's actually a few ways you can do it. Let's talk about the main way, and that is controlling value. One of the things that Google's Pmax platform requires is that it requires you to use its automated bidding. And its automated bidding is then tied to uh, essentially one guarantee that they give to their advertisers is that if you're going to use their automated bidding, aka Google Smart Bidding, they'll ensure that that bidding is hitting a target that you give it to achieve from a return perspective. The two ways that you'll interface with this are TROS or Target Return on Ad Spend or TCPA, Target Cost Per Acquisition. And when you are running ads using these targets, Google essentially enters into a, a bit of a unsigned contract with you as the advertiser. They ensure that whatever target you put in from an efficiency perspective, that they'll ensure that they hit from a performance perspective. What that means is when you give it a TROS target, they're saying that they are going to hit it for you. And as long as you give it a sense of what you actually value, the R in return on ad spend, you uh, have a mechanism by which you can control a little bit about where those ads show. The returns tied to value, and so if you control value, you can control where these ads show. You probably won't be able to control value if you use Google conversion tracking uh, to produce the return number in your return and ad spend. So I recommend avoiding using the Google conversion pixel or the conversion tracking pixel, uh, as some of you might know it on your website, either directly or in the Google uh, Tag Management Tool or GTM. If you're using the conversion tracking out of the box, you're going to essentially have no control over how Google assigns value and captures it for TROS or TCPA. If you use the Conversions API, though, which essentially is the interface that Google provides all of its advertisers to send data directly to uh, Google Ads algorithms to identify value through a essentially a server connection or an information connection. This is a great way to better calibrate what Google sees as valuable and what TROS is able to identify and then target with your ad dollars. Using Conversion API, you can identify traffic and the clicks that Google's capturing. And you can identify things like, hey, if it's a click coming from a mixed network, AKA the network that only is available to Pmax ads, you can take those clicks down in value. You can identify, for example, clicks that Pmax is finding where they are going to landing pages that you care about, that you know are highly intended, uh, potentially highly valuable users. Say your PDP pages, right? All the clicks that are measurable um, and identified as driving to landing pages like those can be identified in your first party analytics, your Google Analytics 4 data, or if you're not a Google Analytics user, your Adobe or Amplitude data. And you can identify those clicks and send, hey, Google, these clicks are more valuable. We're assigning more. An example of this is Bonsai's predicted click value algorithm. We call it PCV, and it runs for Google Ads. Uh, it connects seamlessly into smart bidding and it sees into the nature of every click, whether it comes from a Google search campaign or it comes from Google Pmax. 
PCV appropriately values every click that you buy, and it does so by understanding what clicks are driving the most incremental touch points to high intent users. It deeply discounts the value it assigns clicks that come from non-incremental, interstitial, remnant, and any other low value touch points that could be purchased, whether they be from Pmax directly or from any other undersold or low value Google ad options that uh, you are capturing across their own and operated properties. But that's really the Pmax story. That's the history of Pmax. It's how you can think about the bull case for Pmax. This is the problem with Pmax. And given what type of marketer you are and what kind of brand your business is, this is how you should think about and then potentially use Pmax if you have to use it for your business. We hope this is helpful. We know this is probably not the end of the Pmax saga. We look forward to the next chapter in automation from Google, and we're here to help you succeed along the way. Send your questions, comments, or derision to Bonsai's LinkedIn page, or connect with me directly, linkedin.com slash in slash butlermat. Enjoy.